it's frustrating. As, as one of the dairy counties, uh, one of the top dairy counties in, in the country, uh, we, we still have concerns with the Canadian proposal on that. And C Canada is a great trading partner. The USMCA is great. But they're clearly violating the spirit and the letter of, of the law uh, it, uh, with the US, USMCA. Uh, and I don't see us really fighting back. You know, we can, we can work on a, on a cooperative basis, but they are protecting their industry. And I feel like they're playing hardball. We're playing wiffle ball. I'd like to see the administration stand, stand up for our dairy farmers as much as Canada is for theirs. When will we begin to see some progress on this? So, Mr. Smucker, let me just begin by saying I share, what, I share your frustrations um, and uh, know how frustrated our dairy farmers are. Um, I would disagree with your characterization that we're playing wiffle ball, and I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, the truth of the matter is that USMCA provides us with a, a, a lot of enforcement tools, and um, um, the case that we brought against uh, Canada and, and have litigated all the way through is actually the, um, uh, the maiden use of uh, the dispute settlement system under USMCA, and we prioritized uh, taking on Canada and its, uh, its dairy policies here. We have won that case. We are in conversations with Canada right now, and uh, this may get to your frustrations. Um, I don't think that um, in what Canada is proposing as its remedy, uh, that our farmers feel like um, I don't think it it's delivering. acceptable. I, I want to move on to, to another issue, if I may. We talked briefly about this uh, yesterday. Uh, my district in Pennsylvania and the, the region around my district in southeast Pennsylvania is a leader in gene and cell therapy. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of advancements, um, both there and uh, in other areas of, of the country and of the world, really, on um, uh, synthetic bio. Of, uh, development of materials that uh, otherwise occur only naturally. So this is going to be um, a, a game changer, really, in gene therapy production uh, and in a lot of other areas as well. And I can tell you, some, the companies have seen as, as what's happened with China with IP in some other uh, areas and are very, very concerned. We're advancing. We're in the cusp of something that will be uh, uh, you know, a, a an advancement and a game changer around the world. They're very, very concerned about uh, protecting the IP here, ensuring that as it's being developed around the world, we're all on a level playing field, that IP is protected. And just, I don't know if there's really a question there, but I guess maybe if you would quickly respond to that. Well, I always love to learn more about um, uh, innovative work that's happening um, throughout America, and it sounds like there's some really cutting edge um, technology um, that is being developed in your district. Um, I think that um, the anxiety that you're expressing here, which is how do we how do we keep um, the the um, that cutting edge technology that's being developed here from being unfairly taken away or exactly. or being disadvantaged? Um, I think this is absolutely why um, we are taking a larger lens on the view um, with respect to our um, uh, challenging um, competitive relationship with China and the reason why we are looking at China's industrial targeting practices. Um, when it comes to these burgeoning industries, we cannot afford to um, become victim in the same way we have with uh, other industries. Uh, like I'm sorry, I want to get one other question and, and just solar. one other comment on that. This is clearly a, a priority of the Chinese. They have in their five-year plan mentioned that uh, SynBio is a priority and a focus of theirs. But my, my final question is, uh, my understanding is the world currently has more supply than demand for COVID-19 vaccines, and I've seen reports that multiple countries have had to exp uh, dispose of expired uh, doses. H how does that fact affect the Biden administration's perspective on the importance of waiving intellectual property rights in response to the pandemic? Well, I know that there are last mile problems, uh, but I'm not quite sure that there's a, um, uh, there's an excess in supply in terms of more supply than there are people. And I think that there are real distributional um, uh, inequities that have happened, distributional mismatches. And it does raise, um, uh, place a, a real spotlight on the issue of where these supply chains are, who has access to them, and uh, when we meet the next pandemic, um, how prepared we are. Um, for the different parts of the world to be able to access and to be able to provide for themselves. Thank you.